What's up guys, welcome to another video. So today we are filming another question and answer and all of these questions are from the previous question and answer. So if you do have any questions, please leave them down below for the next question and answer. So let's just get started. What is the best advice you could give to a 16 year old male who is involved in training and nutrition? If you are 16 years old, you are going to be able to make gains very rapidly. So make sure you are eating enough calories. Nutrition is very important because in your early stages of lifting, that's where you're going to be able to make the most gains very quickly. So make sure you're eating enough calories Two, make sure you're using progressive overload in the gym. Progressive overload is basically progressively increasing the load over time. So either increasing reps or increasing weight each time that you work out. You know, you don't want to be doing the same workout for the same amount of reps and the same amount of sets and the same amount of weight. So you want to be challenging yourself every single time you train, progressively getting stronger and you know, be patient because it does take time and be consistent. So I think, uh, I think that could really help. Do you think people can have cheat days every week or every 10 days when their goal is to hit seven to 8% body fat? Absolutely. Now it really comes down to your consistency. You know, what are you doing outside of the cheat days? Because you know, a lot of people will want to have a cheat day and they'll have a cheat day and then you know, and then they just try to severely restrict because they ate too many calories and then they feel guilty. And then it ends up becoming like a vicious cycle of, you know, not really being able to get on track and then just kind of like almost having more cheat days than they would expect, you know, because once they fall off their diet and it's like, oh, well, I already blew my diet. And then they just continue to keep on eating. So if you are consistent, you know, like I am, I'm very consistent with my diet and you guys see how I do eat you know, eight to 10,000 calories every single weekend. And you know, I'm not getting like super fat. If I wanted to get lean, I could get lean, but I am currently in a gaining phase. So you could definitely get down to seven to 8% body fat while doing cheat days. And that really depends on how much you're cheating. You know, say if you're eating 20,000 calories every single weekend, then that's going to be a little tough to, you know, get down to that low level of body fat, depending on what you're doing for the rest of the week. You know, I don't recommend that. But if you're just having like a moderate cheat day, you know, anywhere from say like four to 7,000 calories or even up to 8,000 calories. I mean, I do train very intensely, so I'm burning lots of calories and I skate. So I have a pretty decent, healthy metabolic rate so I can kind of get away with it more. But if you are just looking to diet down to seven, eight percent, you know, just really look at your weekly balance of calories and make sure you are in a weekly deficit and you will keep on losing weight. How long were you on the keto diet and how many days do you work out a week? So I was on keto, I believe for about three months and it just wasn't the best. Like my brain function was amazing. I felt like super clear and sharp, but when it came down to like training and like endurance, it just like, I didn't have any gas in the tank. You know, I was even trying to go to the barracks at that time. And you know, I have this huge, amazing skate park in front of me and I was skating around and I just had zero energy on the keto diet. So. Um, if you're training intensely and you're serious about your training, I highly recommend that you do consume some carbohydrates. Um, the keto diet isn't the most optimal for strength and muscle gain. So I would definitely try to consume some carbohydrates, but that's just what I did. That's my experience with keto. And how many times do I work out per week? I do work out four times per week. So Monday is upper body one, Tuesday is lower body one, Wednesday is off. Thursday is upper body two, Friday is upper body two, and then Saturday and Sunday I rest. I think we ever consider creating a downloadable program, lower body, upper body, abs, or glute hypertrophy. Thanks. Yes, I definitely plan to make another ebook or another program to where I could just have it on my website and it's basically a full protocol because you know I do online coaching as well and it is a lot of work to keep up with clients, but I do really enjoy it. But I feel like if I did have another program that basically had a lot of information, a lot of details, a lot of data that they could basically coach themselves, you know, so you can learn a lot from the program. So I definitely plan to make like probably like a, a glute hypertrophy program coming pretty soon because that's been one of the most requested ones. So um, I think I'm gonna work on that. I'm curious how you know how many calories you need to burn since you don't target a specific calorie goal and sometimes you have less and sometimes more calories. Second question, what is your profession or what could you do if you wouldn't have YouTube? Now, I definitely know what my calorie intake is because when I say sometimes I eat a little more, sometimes I eat a little bit less, 
I am still tracking. So wherever the calories fall, like I have a target of like say 3,000 to 3,200. Sometimes I'll eat 3,400, sometimes I'll eat 2,800. And it really varies, it depends how I feel, if I want more calories. And you know the weekly balance is more important than day to day. So if you're looking at your weekly balance in a whole, then you can kind of really see where your body weight's going, you know, with your average weigh-ins. So I don't specifically go for a specific calorie target every single day, you know, because some days I want a little bit more, some days I want a little less, and I just kind of really listen to my body. But, you know, there are some days where I'm like, all right, I have to like get down more calories. If, you know, say I just ate my meal and I'm at like, say, 2100, I'm like, that is just way too low. So I will increase the calories kind of forcefully if I need to, just to make sure I have enough calories for maximal recovery so I don't feel like kind of like tired and low energy because if you're feeling low energy, then most likely could be due to low calories and that's not what I want because I have been there before, you know, just really restricting, trying to stay super shredded and energy levels were just terrible. So the next question was, what is your profession or what could you do if you wouldn't have YouTube? Well, before I started YouTube and before I got into fitness, I was a professional skateboarder. That's what I did, I competed and everything. I don't, well actually, I was just gonna say I don't compete anymore, but actually I am competing, which I haven't competed in a long time at the skate park of Tampa. So I'm gonna skate the Tampa Pro Contest, which I'm really, really excited before. It's been super long time. So I'm really excited to see all my friends and all my homies that I used to skate with, like on tours and trips and other contests and stuff. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And also outside of YouTube, I am a model. So I did just get signed with Wilhelmina Models, which I'm actually really, really stoked about. And yeah, it was just like, it was something I wanted to do for a while, like pretty much a year ago, like I submitted photos to them and I didn't hear anything back. And you know, then I tried again like mid-year and then it was just back in like November, I did submit myself again and then I got an email back from the head guy over at Wilhelmina and then, you know, I sent more photos over and then like they wanted a video of just like my physique and my body to see how I was looking. And then, you know, I sent them a whole ton of photos because I had to plan like a photo shoot because they needed stronger photos. So then sent all those photos over and then uh, I finally just got an email when I was in California letting me know that they would love to have me on board. So again, I am really, really stoked for the opportunity to be modeling for Wilhelmina. So yeah, I do model and then also I do training and nutrition coaching. So those are the things that I do outside of YouTube. What are your thoughts on Cole Robinson's snake diet? I've been on it and I lost 15 pounds in days, super hard, but I'm trying to get over my food addiction. I seriously think Cole Robinson is one of the most epic people in the entire world. Like. If you guys don't know who Cole Robinson is with like the snake diet, he is seriously super smart, he's well educated, and he gets the point out. Like he's very, very aggressive in his videos, and a lot of people might be offended, but it's almost like what needs to be done. And his impact on fat loss has been very, very effective. So like his clients get crazy results, and it's like, I started fasting a lot because I watched like a bunch of his videos, and it got me really thinking, you know, and like, I had so many conditions with like my thyroid condition, I had like skin conditions. I don't know if you guys remember like months and months back, you know, I would have like little like spots and like some people call them like sunspots or whatever. But after really reading and learning and, and digging into data, you know, I basically found out that like if you have any type of skin condition, that's basically due to like could be kidney function because your kidneys filter out your body and then your skin is pretty much your third kidney. So when your body's trying to detox and eliminate toxins and all that, you know, your kidneys should be filtering them. But if your kidneys are backed up and aren't properly filtering, where do you think the toxic waste is gonna come out of? It's gonna start coming out of your skin. So like, I had like spots on my skin. Now I have zero spots, you know, since I started fasting and then I got my kidneys to start filtering. So it's like, it's been pretty wild. You know, it's been a journey for sure. So that's when I was experimenting with fruits only. You know, and then I tried the plant-based diet, and now it's like I found what really, really works for me. So I'm really excited to just keep on moving forward and continue to fast because fasting is very beneficial for the body. And man, I gotta say, yeah, a big round of applause for Cole Robinson. If you guys don't know who he is, definitely check him out. He's called Snake Diet, and beware because you might get offended, but he will definitely get the point across. So yeah, I think Cole Robinson is a genius. What's the longest fast you have done? Are you planning one soon? So the longest fast that I've ever done was a 48 hour fast. Now I really want to experiment with like some 72 hour fast, possibly even longer. But the thing is like when I do a 48 hour fast, I will typically do it after the cheat day. 
So I'll eat like the whole cheat day and then like eight o'clock at night, I'll basically finish my last meal of the cheat day. And then that's typically filmed on Saturdays. So Sunday I'll fast all day long. And then Monday I'll wake up, I'll hydrate, and then I'll just train later in the day. And then I'll get my food in like say later in the day. So that's the longest I've gone with fasting. So 48 hours, but I really want to push it and try to go for a 72, maybe the next time. So yeah, I'm just having some fun experimenting and yeah, it's just cool to experiment. I think my question is, how do you count calories of meals eaten in restaurants? I'm also using my fitness pal, but I can hardly find any info regarding the dishes at various restaurants. So I would like to know in your way of doing that. Great job and keep up the good work. Greetings from Sweden. <sighs> that was a long one. So, um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> So um, yeah, so for like rough estimates and stuff, I will pretty much like say when I go to Five O Donuts, I have weighed Five O's donuts, so I basically compare them to like a Dunkin' Donut. So I've weighed both of those donuts, and then I'll kind of use a value, or I'll use something that's close. You know, for some Dunkin' Donuts, I will use like you know 2.2 donuts for a Five O donut or something because the Five O donuts weigh twice as much and they are covered on toppings. So I will just kind of like eyeball it, rough estimate. You know, if I go somewhere and I eat a burger, I'll, I can manually enter the calories in. You know, I can enter like, you know, hamburger bun, hamburger patty, cheese, barbecue sauce, bacon, avocado. You can do that manually and then just kind of get your meal together. Or you could basically just look up, you know, look up Fridays. Like it's like Fridays, Fridays is like a chain restaurant and you can just type in Fridays burger, you know, bacon and avocado or something. And they'll probably have a food item there and then just based on how big the burger is that you're eating at this restaurant, if it looks like bigger than normal, then put like, you know, maybe 1.2 of the Fridays burger, you know. So just try to get as close as you possibly can. Obviously, I am not down to the macro and the tea, but I try to get as close as possible. You know, I don't like, overestimate by like 5,000 calories. So my cheat days are pretty closely estimated to the macros and the calories, but obviously they aren't pinpointed on, but I try to get as close as possible. Do you train Monday to Friday? Um, yes, but I just don't train on Wednesday. So I just mentioned in a previous question, you know, my training split. So upper, lower, off, upper, lower, off, off. Have you ever been to the UK and would you like to visit? Yes, I have been to the UK. I've been there twice. And I believe I'm gonna go back in May. I believe it's May for Body Power. So I should be at Body Power with Ambrosia. So they're gonna have a booth there. So it would be awesome to meet you guys if you guys are coming out. So I believe Body Power is in like Birmingham, I believe. So yeah, if you guys can make it, it's in May. So hopefully see you there. What was your dream job as a kid? Well, if you guys go back to like a few question and answers like, when I was like really young, I used to see the, like the garbage men going by on the trucks, like jumping off the truck, picking up garbage, throwing it in like the truck. And I did mention that in like a previous Q and A and I was like, man, I want to be a garbage man when I grow up because like they just looked cool. You know, they jumped off the truck, they're just throwing barrels and like garbage and stuff. So, um, at that point, yeah, that's what I wanted to be. But like ever since I was like 12 years old, I started skateboarding and I wanted to be professional. Like that's what I wanted to do. Like that was like my dream. So then of course, you know, skating, staying consistent with it. Um, I ended up turning pro. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to do. These videos are great, Nick. I love your honest answers. I have a question. What was one of the best days of your life so far with fond memories? Man, I've been through like so many different phases of my life. You know, I've been up, I've been down and you know, like when it was great, it was great. And then when I was down, I was down, you know, like because I'm just really grateful to be able to do what I do today and it's not necessarily like I have a specific time point where it was like the greatest moments, but I have to say I've had some really, really good moments in my life and I'm still experiencing some really, really good moments in my life. And just even this past trip in California, it was definitely like a memorable one for sure. It was really, really amazing. So um, yeah, just greatness keeps on happening. You know, that's what happens when you live a positive life, you just have a positive outlook and yeah, like I, I've really, I've really changed my life around over the years and I just gotta say, I've been doing everything that I wanna do and I'm super stoked to see what the future brings and I just feel like it's just getting better and better. And yeah, I'm really excited for what's to come. Would you consider an all vegan cheat day? By the way, love your videos. Yes, eventually I'll do a full vegan cheat day. You know, I just started eating meat and dairy again. So it's like, I really love burgers and like, obviously there's dairy on like the donuts with like the whipped cream and like the frostings and all that. 
But um, yeah, eventually I will do a full vegan cheat day because vegan food is actually really good and really tasty. So yeah, I'll have to plan that one soon. What are some ways you can suppress your appetite when fasting? Is it bad to chew a lot of gum or drink diet drinks to do so? Now, the best way to suppress your appetite when fasting is just basically get adapted. So if you're gonna go from straight like eating five meals a day into trying to fast for 24 hours or 36 hours, it's gonna be a little difficult. So what you could do is just kind of start intermittent fasting so where you could just kind of keep pushing your meals back to a later time. And then slowly you'll get used to a lower eating frequency. So instead of eating five meals a day, you'll start eating two and then you can adapt to one and then you can just try to fast a little bit longer. So if you do put sodium and potassium in your water, then it will actually help you fast a bit longer because when you fast on plain water, you are basically just flushing out all your electrolytes and it's just gonna make you feel terrible. So if you do put some sodium and potassium in your water, it could actually give you some energy, you'll feel a bit better and, you know, I train fasted every day, but I do put salt and potassium in my water and I feel completely fine, I feel great, and then post-workout, I'll break my fast and then eat a meal. Yeah, I don't recommend chewing lots of gum because gum does have sugar in it, artificial sweeteners, as well as like diet sodas and stuff, which diet sodas are fine, you know, if you have them with like a meal or something, but if you're drinking them all day long, they do slightly spike insulin, so you do not want to be spiking your insulin when you're fasting, so that'll pretty much break your fast. So when insulin is up, fat loss is basically shut off. So it's pretty much like after you eat a meal, your insulin is high and you are not burning fat anymore. But then once insulin comes back down and you're in the fasted state, then you go back to fat burning mode. So I don't recommend chewing gum and drinking diet soda drinks all day. I am pretty active and I go to the gym five days a week. I can't get rid of some belly fat and I eat pretty good too. I have abs if I flex my stomach, but I want to be able to see them without flexing. Any tips? By the way, I love your channel and your cheat days are my fave. Well, thank you. So. My biggest tip is it doesn't really matter how good you're eating. It really comes down to calories. You can eat clean food all day long, but if you're still overeating, you're not gonna be losing weight and you're not gonna be dropping body fat. So I highly recommend that you start tracking your calories, start tracking your weight, and just see kind of where it's going over one to two weeks. And then you can just kind of make an adjustment to your calories. If you're basically maintaining your weight, pull back say 100 calories and see what happens after one to two weeks. And if you stall again, pull back a little bit more, maybe add a little bit of cardio, and that's just basically how the energy balance works. Or I would recommend doing some longer fasts, which are very, very effective for fat loss as well. Hello, Nick, I just wanted to ask how many warm-up sets do you do before hitting your workout? Now, it really depends. So typically, say for my squat workout, say my working weight is gonna be 325 pounds. So what I will do, I will start out with 135 pounds on the bar. So I'll do about five reps. I'll bump it up to 185 do about five, then I'll go up to 225, do about five, and then I will go up to 275, do five reps, and then I will bump it up to my working weight of 325 pounds, and then I'll hit my work sets. Have you thought about doing a 90 day no shave challenge? Yo, I seriously would wonder what I look like after 90 days of not shaving. I would probably have, my beard would probably be pretty long, so I don't, I don't know if I could do that, but yeah, I, I like this length and it's, pretty good for modeling and just overall easy to maintain. So uh, yeah, I don't think I'll be doing a 90 day no shave challenge. Great video, what are your future goals? Also, do you believe in calories in, calories out? So for my future goals, I would say it's basically to keep on doing what I'm doing because what I'm doing is working. My online coaching business is growing. My YouTube channel is growing. I just signed with Wilhelmina, so I'm going to be start growing more in the modeling world and I'm really excited just to see where it takes me. You know, I'm skating a bit more too. Like I'm not saying I'm gonna basically be like a competitive athlete again and skate in all these contests, but you literally never know, you know. So I am skating in the Tampa Pro Contest in the beginning of March, so I'm excited for that. That should be fun. So yeah, future goals, man. Just keep on doing what I'm doing, keep growing, keep progressing, and yeah, keep on enjoying life. And then also calories in versus calories out, that is true to a certain extent. So there is a thing called metabolic adaptation and it happens to a lot of people when they diet down for so long, they're doing so much cardio, they're lowering the calories, so much cardio, lowering the calories. So their real maintenance calories should be up here. But even with them doing tons of cardio and restricting their calories, their maintenance is down here. Say like 1800 because they are so metabolically suppressed, you know, say if it's like a male or 
1600 or something. You know, when, they're, when their maintenance intake should be like at say 24 or 25 or probably even more depending on their activity level, you know, for like say dieting. You know, so like when you get really, really low in calories, that's called metabolic adaptation. And so the calories in versus calories out equation stops working, you know, when you are metabolically adapted to your low calorie intake and the excessive cardio. When you're feeling unmotivated, what pushes you to get to the gym? Now, some days I feel like I don't want to train, but lately it's been like, I can't wait to train. You know, I'm super excited to train. And I think that's just due to, you know, having a good calorie intake. I'm not at a crazy level of leanness to where I'm super hungry. And it's like, I, I don't even really get that hungry. You know, since I am fasting, I'm basically in almost like a body recomposition phase. So I'm not really trying to gain too much weight. I'm just trying to gain some strength and some size and I'm just trying to stay a little bit on the leaner end. And so what gets me motivated is just like getting in there, listening to some good music and really focusing on trying to progress. You know, I do track all my sets, reps and weights. So I do look at what I did the last workout and I'm like, all right, I'm going to increase my squat by five pounds and like, let's go, let's get this. You know, like I'll put the music on and I'll start jamming, I'll feel it, I'll get warmed up and then I just go and then after that first set and I say I hit my target where I wanted to hit, I'm pumped up, I'm ready. And then next set comes, I'm like, I got this, you know, so I just get fired up and I get excited. And you know, just having like that goal that you want to hit in the gym can really be motivating and inspiring to keep on going. So definitely track your sets, reps and weights and definitely try to continually be beating those records every single time you train. How do you maintain energy levels throughout the day with only one meal a day? Now, like I said before, it's like you will adapt to whatever you throw at your body. So if you're used to eating five meals a day, you're going to get hungry every single time you're normally used to eating. So say you eat at eight o'clock, you're gonna get hungry. If you eat at 10 o'clock, you get hungry. 12 o'clock, hungry. Two o'clock, you're gonna get hungry. You know, if that's your normal eating frequency, that's when you're gonna start getting hungry. But when you adapt to a fasting lifestyle, your body's gonna to adapt to it. Because when you are eating all your calories in that window, it's going to keep you full a lot longer. You know, if you're eating these small little baby meals, you're gonna be hungry again in like say two hours, you know, so then you're gonna eat again. So if you eat a massive feeding in one meal, then you're not gonna be hungry for a very long time. And so once you adapt to that, um, it just basically becomes your normal way of eating and it's not like you're ravenously hungry all day. While your cheat day is planned, do you pick out the spots for eating in advance or just the calorie intake? And wherever you come across sounds good, is that where you decide to eat? So I pretty much just eat till I'm satiated, till I'm good. I will typically try to have an idea of which places I want to visit. So if I haven't been to a place yet, I'll just you know, look at some places the night before and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna eat Indian food, I'm gonna try out this place, or I'm gonna have pizza or a burger or Thai food or whatever. But you know, when I'm in Florida, you guys know where I'm starting. I'm always starting at 5-0 because that's what I truly enjoy. I love donuts and they are amazing. So. In terms of like calories and all that, I just eat till I'm satiated and I feel good. I don't go into a restaurant like thinking, all right, I'm only gonna eat say 3000 calories here. I go in and I eat whatever I want and then after I'm done eating, you know, I'll just start kind of tallying things up, see where I'm at for calories and move on. You know, so like my cheat days aren't like structurally planned for like a calorie goal. When I was dieting and um, I was getting lean, I allowed myself like 6,500 calories for the cheat days, like six to 6,500, which I did over the summer, you know? So when I was dieting, it just like, and I was still enjoying myself. I was still eating a lot of food and I had a calorie cap of like say 6,000 to 6,500 and I still ate a lot of really good food. So like the cheat day doesn't have to be like eight to 10,000 calories to enjoy yourself. Like if you guys wanted to have a cheat day, like even anywhere from like three to 5,000 calories is plenty. That's a, a lot of calories to enjoy yourself. So um, again, there's no calorie goal here. I just eat till I'm satiated. Are you thinking about doing any more drag racing? I occasionally race my mom's 66 Nova and I think it's super dope that you're into it. Your car is super pretty. Thank you, Samantha. Um, no, I haven't raced in a very long time. You know, I'm down here in Florida. My cars are up there in Massachusetts in a garage, but the Camaro is ready to go, but I just have so much going on and I don't know when I will go back up to Mass to actually work on it and get racing again, but hmm, I don't know, like, but I don't know, like hopefully, hopefully at least in like the summer of like 2020, I'll, uh, I'll be racing. So I don't know if I'll be racing this year, 
but definitely the following year I'll be uh, taking the Camaro down the strip. Just curious, how much is your online coaching? So my online coaching, if you go to my website and you send me a client inquiry, fill it out, I will get back to you with my price sheet, how my coaching works. So if you guys are interested in online coaching, just go to my website, click the link up above, which is online coaching, and then it'll bring you to a questionnaire, fill it out, send it to me, and then I'll get back to you as soon as possible. The day after a 10,000 calorie challenge, still remaining under the weekly calorie intake, do you continue with your normal diet or do you do a few days of low carbohydrates and low calorie? So typically after like say a super high calorie day, well 10,000 calories isn't super high, it is a higher calorie day. But typically I've been doing some fasting on the Sunday, so on Sunday after a cheat day, I won't eat until like say Monday. So I'll do like a 36 hour to 48 hour fast, but the last cheat day I ate on Sunday. I went out with some friends, I was still in California, so I had that dinner Saturday night with you know Kendra, with Step, and then Sean, and then the following day I fasted all day, and then Sean and them wanted to go out to dinner, so I was like, all right, I'll go. I went out to dinner, I ate a burger, and I didn't really eat that many calories because I don't typically really eat much on Sunday, but you know, that could always change. It's not like a set thing, like, oh, I can't eat. And again, that's just what I do. I just have a very easy, flexible way of living. You know, if I wanna eat, I'm gonna eat, and if I wanna fast, I'll just fast, you know? So um, yeah, I'm not super strict, but I do know exactly what I'm doing, and I do have a very good balance. All right, guys, so that is going to be the question and answer. Thank you to everybody that left the question below. And again, if I did not get to your question, Please comment on this video down below with your question for the next Q&A. I'll try to get to as many as I can. And again, if I did answer the question before, you know, like all, you know, I am getting new subscribers daily. So like, you know, maybe every couple videos, if it's a frequent question, then I'll answer it again for some of the new subs. But again, for everyone that's been subscribed for a while, bear with me on some of the questions that I do answer again. But again, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the love and the support. It's been amazing, I'm having a blast. I hope you guys are enjoying too. So like always, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.